so welcome to Manchester for the first uh, European OpenStack Operators Meetup. Um, we've got a, uh, the OpenStack community across Europe is very well represented here and we've got folks from as far afield as the US and Japan and we've got a uh, packed couple of days of, uh, of discussion sessions around OpenStack. It's seriously exciting uh, because I believe in this venue and with the hundred or so people who come along, we've really captured the spirit of OpenStack and continuing along in the tradition of Ops Meetups. So uh, we're going to be sharing best practices, gathering a whole lot of feedback on how people use the software and getting people actively involved. Tell me more about what I can look forward to in the agenda. So we've got a pretty packed agenda, maybe 30 odd sessions across a couple of days. So uh, we've got things happening like the first uh, meeting of the scientific working group, which is going to talk about research computing as it relates to OpenStack. We're very fortunate to have the project technical lead of Nova join us to hear about all the things that are working perfectly with Nova and some that uh, perhaps aren't so much. And uh, I believe on Tuesday morning, we're fortunate to have the CTO of a company called Enter IT that's just won a massive tender with the European Union to provide cloud there, talking about OpenStack in the European context. And tell me about something that is surprising that is coming out of this meeting so far. So I think there's some unique opportunities for OpenStack emerging in Europe. You know, um, the, uh, the um, concerns about data sovereignty uh, kind of make the European landscape a, uh, a kind of unique place in terms of, uh, in terms of opportunity for localized cloud provision. And we're starting to see the results of that now, you know, particularly with uh, federated cloud provision from, uh, from localized European-based providers. Well, thank you so much for hosting. So let's talk Keystone. What were some of the hot topics you discussed during the soft spin cycle? So the, the Keystone group was really focused on the question of Keystone and Federation. And for Europe, that's a really important topic because you have a number of different organizations, especially the educational organizations that are all very, very interested in OpenStack, are deploying OpenStack, and need to communicate with their peers in other countries. So you have Federation because of the distributed nature of the, of the community here. Um, so they're very interested in it. Uh, when we did sort of a show of hands who's actually using it, there were only three groups that are actually currently using Federation as a group here in, in the UK uh, that's, that's actually very heavily using it. Um, and they're, they're all interested, but that was sort of the, the first aspect. The second part of the conversation really then uh, jumped into the rest of Federation. Uh, what else needs to be federated within the OpenStack environment? So we kind of stepped away from Keystone and started talking about what needs to happen in Nova, what needs to happen in Glance, like if I'm dealing with images and wanting to manage those and manipulate those across different, uh, different boundaries. And tell us some of the action items that came out of your discussion on Keystone. So the, the sort of the top action items were not so much Keystone related as they were, what are the other services that may actually need to integrate? Um, I remember there was one group that was looking at an extension to Keystone and I think we've sort of mapped them or given them a path to uh, to communicate with the Keystone community, really get involved, and actually potentially even develop the code that they need to better integrate into their backend service, their their auto, their, uh, their uh, directory based service to, to tie into the federation services of Keystone. But beyond that, it was more how do we continue that concept of federation into the other projects, into the Novas, the Glances, and the Neutrons were appropriate. Thank you. Hi, Stig. How are you doing today? Very good, very good great. indeed. Great to hear that. It's a great meetup. I really enjoy this actually. It's the first time I've been to the uh, uh, the operators meetup, and um, I've I've really got a lot of value from meeting so many people. And there's there's just everyone who I've I've spoken to, everyone I've met, has been useful and valuable and helpful. It's a fantastic experience actually. It's really good. Glad to hear that. So tell me a little bit more about scientific work group. So. I work with um, Cambridge University, and, um, and we are looking at, at really sort of uh, rationalizing a lot of the infrastructure that um, my group, the Research Computing Services Group, provide. We, we started looking at OpenStack um, in the autumn and, uh, of last year, and really I, I think what we found was that it was very difficult to find other people who were using OpenStack in a similar way to the way that we envisaged. Uh, we went to the summit in Tokyo. We really we, we started off, uh, we set a ball rolling with a couple of introductions with, uh, with some really helpful people, uh, Tim Bell from CERN in particular, um, who put us in touch with a guy called David Flanders, who is in the uh, OpenStack uh, Foundation now. And, and really, 
from there, we just had this amazing, it was like a Mexican wave going around the world. And um, um, he put us in touch with other researchers across the UK. And then that snowballed across Europe. I went around Australia at least four times. There's so many Australian people who are um, interested in this idea of this uh, scientific working group. Came back through the United States. And now I think we have um, something like 85 people signed up for the, um, for the scientific working group, uh, which is just incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. So uh, in terms of a community, there is this huge sort of spontaneous upwelling of um, interest from, from across the world from these scientific research foundations and institutions. Great to hear that. So what were some of the hot topics you discussed at the Oxford cycle? So we had a, we had a, um, a fairly informal uh, get together and um, the first thing that happened was uh, the room that we had was, was too small by half. And, um, and so we had to go and find a bigger boat, a bigger space. And um, really, I guess the, the really interesting thing that struck me was like the, the social connection that was forming. Um, as soon as we'd raise a topic, it was like, yes, I, I have this problem, or I, I've solved it in this way, or I've seen this interesting work going on, going on over there. There was such a useful exchange of ideas. I mean, it was um, an hour and 20 minutes, and every one of those minutes was, I learned something, I think. and. Um, a, a very worthwhile experience and I'm really looking forward to continuing with this and, and, and building this into something um, um, something that will, will be of great benefit to other institutions and, um, and other scientific establishments across the world. Great. And so what were some of the actionable items resulting from the session? Well, I guess that the, the first thing that, um, uh, that we really uh, came away with was um, this idea that we need to have a way of sharing information. Um, so we, we, we already have uh, like HPC tags on the operator's mailing list, that kind of thing. But, um, but I think in what, what we really identified was the need for some kind of uh, a knowledge base, like a, a place for gathering this stuff. Because a lot of the information that is helpful for doing scientific compute on OpenStack is really scattered around the world. And, um, and it's not always easy to find or to curate that stuff into a useful collection. So I think that the, the first and the biggest action item that I saw from, uh, from our meeting yesterday was, was how could we actually bring that stuff or, or link that stuff together into a useful resource which, which might actually then serve as a knowledge base, a planet or a portal, an event stream and an archive of information that, um, that will really help people get on board with scientific OpenStack. Great to hear that. Anything else you'd like to add? I think it's it's early days. Um, this was really, I mean, this was an, our, our working group is not even officially inaugurated yet. We're looking forward to doing that at the Austin Summit um, coming up in April. So I'm tremendously encouraged by by this sort of this first this first meeting at the European Operators Meetup. It's it's going to be a fantastic journey, and um, I think any other. Uh, scientific institutions or any other interested parties who'd like to get involved, please do because um, we are we are not even officially started yet, but already the ball is rolling. So um, yeah, please do get started. Great, thank you. Please tell us a little bit about some of the hot topics here at the mid cycle. Absolutely, we had a. Uh Lots of great discussions about NOVA and compute related activities. So I, I gave a good summary of what was, what's been happening over Mataka and over the last few releases with things like Upgrade and all the work on Live Migrate fixes. So we had a great session going through how we're evolving Live Migrate over the Mataka cycle. We've got some great outcomes there where we're just making sure that all the operators, are, like uh, their use cases are being dealt with with the work that we're currently working on. And that seems to be going really well. We did a deep dive into upgrades and packaging and everything else. It's really interesting to see the variety of different ways in which people are upgrading and packaging the whole OpenStack uh, offering and ecosystem, and particularly Nova and how, how they're dealing with that. Talking about the differences between deploying off master and deploying from stable branches uh, and how that impacts like the development cycles and updating everything else. So really One of the great things that we, that I, I got out of this was making sure that the path that we've agreed from previous off cycle meetups and other things are actually working out. 
So validating the fixes that we put in place and actually solving the problems that the operators are really having. Um, so particularly things along the lines of uh, the live upgrade work, make sure that we have minimal downtime and hopefully actually zero downtime during the upgrade procedures. So seeing how that impacts with people's packaging and their orchestration and what they're currently doing, how we get to more people using it and more feedback. There's some great feedback on folks using initial versions and how the current roadmap for changes should help them um, validating all that. Great. So tell us a little bit about the action items now that have come out of the mid cycle. Absolutely. So one great action item that's come out is making sure that we document uh, more of the upgrade procedures. So we need to make sure that the stuff that we now have validated in the gate with made multi no job to make sure that that process gets uh, uh, documented well so people can take that out and scale it out. Uh, there were some specific cases about uh, backports to uh, stable branches and how the stable maintenance team was spinning up so make sure that we integrate well with that and make sure there's good ways for all the operators to get their bugs and their problems to triage in that system. So that was a good action item to follow up with the stable team. Uh, and there's some more specific things on sort of like step and resize and certain bugs that have closed and certain and in talking about like the features that we've done that we fix individual people's problems and to make sure that we ground um, for those folks who has actually been completed the way that we want the documentation in place in all of those pieces. So yeah, it's been really good to sort of make sure that you get the, the full cycle of the problem sorted. Thank you very much. So Rocky, tell us, what is OSOps? OSOps is a user committee project that is operations, and it is collecting up all those scripts and tools that operators need beyond the basic OpenStack software to manage the day-to-day -day operations of their clouds. And tell us about some of the hot topics that were discussed about OSOps. Well, what we did is describing how we actually break down the project in different repos to make it easier for the operators to start pushing code upstream. This is not a typical code that you will push for other OpenStack projects. This is a little bit more like an office space for operators to push whatever they want. So we're walking through the process to actually which one of these uh, repos is the most important for the code that they wanted to push upstream to use those scripts, to use that code, and actually to start providing feedback. One of the good things about it is we're gonna start uh, another session in this uh, meetup to provide a little bit more like walking in what exactly you will be welcome to push in those repos. So tell us about some of the action items that we can look forward to coming out of this summer. Well, one of the items that came out of the discussion was the need for tools that monitor the actual health state of the individual software packages in the cloud as opposed to just the infrastructure hardware. And the ask was, how are you doing this? We've already got some info from CERN and we're going to try and get that merged in so other folks can take a look and give it a spin. And I think that we also need to provide a little bit more organization in the future. Uh, it could actually look a little bit messy and we want to take it right now because it's just an initiative right now. But as we start making more content available for operators, we're going to create a little bit more structure around it and we're going to provide the proper documentation for everybody to start documenting even more. Uh, what this OS Ops project is about. Right, and one of the things that I've taken away from this is that we need to get the Oslo Sphinx documentation format into our repos so that each of these scripts do get documented and there's an easy way for operators to do that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So what would you say are the top bugs identified during the mid-cycle? There was a lot of great discussion about um, improvements needed for other services to support Keystone v3. There was discussion about um, Neutron support for IPv6. Uh, there was a lot of talk around um, 
the different SDKs and OpenStack uh, CLI and improvements needed for uh, user tooling and developer tooling. Um, so I think those were some of the highlights from the discussion. Great, and tell us also about the highlights in terms of new feature requests. Yeah, there's ongoing work around a um, topic called Get Me a Network, which is essentially to make it easier to provision your first VM so that a network is immediately available. Talk about improvements and kind of next steps needed there. Um, some other features were actually, given the operator's focus, were tooling that the operators were interested in. It's really interesting within the meeting, um, other operators mentioned that they had contributed stuff to OS Ops tooling repo um, that were available for those uh, other operators who were wondering if they should go build something. So a really great um, uh, example of collaboration between operators. Anything else you want to add? No, just that we're uh, taking the feedback from this uh, meeting and delivering it to the different project teams who weren't uh, there in the meeting to kind of say these are the things that operators are really focused on us improving within OpenStack and hopefully those become a priority going forward. Thank you. Thanks. Tell me, what were some of the hot topics that you discussed today? Yeah, so with the, with the Neutron project, um, the number one topic that we ran into, I think, was a, a real concern about documentation. Uh, there were a number of different, uh, different users that were basically saying that they didn't have enough documentation to really clearly understand what the best practices were, which resources to actually use, like which virtual switch to actually leverage, uh, and then proper configuration for those. Uh, and, and so we actually pulled together a pretty decent list of uh, a couple of additional uh, scenarios that were needed to be captured uh, in the documentation that I think would really help them. Great. So Edgar, tell me about what some of the action items that came out of the discussions were. Yes. As Robert mentioned, documentation was very important. So one of the things that we highlighted during the session was that we have a very specific guide for networking. We describe the guide not as a typical documentation where you go step by step, so actually what we did in that one was to create a scenarios, typical deployments that the operators would actually end up doing to guide them to have best practices on how to use Neutron and how to actually get the best practices out of it. One of the things that we missed in that networking guide is a good section about how to do a troubleshooting and the booking on the communication path between virtual machines and the physical host. What else do you want to tell us about what's been happening at the mid-cycle? Uh, the mid-cycle, I think, has been great. You know, we're getting a lot of feedback from the operators, uh, a, a lot of interesting uh, interactions, especially given that uh, many of them are running systems at very large scale. Here in Europe, it seems like it's very uh, high-performance computing, so it's a large-scale com uh, computing users. Um, and the network is an important part of that. Uh, questions about network performance came up, right? How can we improve this? How can we find better ways of doing this? And uh, as Edgar was saying, uh, one of the biggest issues was troubleshooting. When something does go wrong, how do they determine that? Uh, and, and sort of just getting that feedback, I think, was really useful and to get back to the community, too. So besides documentation, what feedback would you be taking to the Neutron development team? Operators are aware that Neutron is a very complex architecture. They want actually to simplify a little bit based on the use cases that they have. They don't want to deploy all the simple use cases that we have available in Neutron. On the other hand, they want to have whatever is useful for the use cases to be applicable through a more simplified architecture. Thank you. Tell me your perspective on being here at your first Ops mid-cycle. It's unique to actually get here and be with other operators. Uh, it's nice to get out of the U.S. and get into the European zone. You get uh, different perspectives on how they solve problems, uh, the types of problems they have. It's very academic here, it seems like, and the integrations that they approach, whereas we are very industry-focused, very top-down, and they prefer peer-to-peer -peer approaches that can bounce from cloud to cloud and do their own integrations, which is very core to their problem-solving abilities and what they need in their um, final solutions. Tell me about what you're seeing here at the Ops Summit. So, what I find really exciting is, is creating a community of operators um, where they can talk with one another, exchange ideas, and maybe find some commonality in some of the issues that they're finding so they can come to resolution. And what surprised you so far? I think what surprised me as well is some of the differences that we're finding in the European Union versus um, 
the United States and maybe North America in terms of how um, some of the requirements that are being placed on the operators, particularly if they're in the bidding process. What are you learning that might be helpful to your UX work in OpenStack? Well, it's, it's actually a huge amount of really rich data that we're deriving from these, these operator summits, of course, right? So now we have all these ether pads. And that's a great opportunity for us to go through there and start coding the information and trying to um, come, I, I guess, create like larger themes based on what we're seeing here. What else would you like to add? Um, so I, I think one of the things that we do need to do is, so we create these ether pads. Um, it's a lot of really rich data, but somewhat unstructured. I think one of the things that we can do is start taking that data and I worry that it just sits there and it doesn't do anything. And what I'd love to be able to do is as a group sort of say, this is what we saw, these are the larger themes, so we have something to march on. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So what's your take on the operators mid-cycle that just happened this week? Well, it's, uh, it's a first for me. It's my first uh, mid-cycle meetup, so it's, it's, it's interesting to, to, to see what happens uh, and to, to meet other people that might have the same problems, the same success uh, also, because there's a lot of positive things in the OpenStack community. Uh, it's really a chance to, to, to exchange with a lot of people uh, who run various types of clouds, different usage, uh, different sizes. So yes, really it's, it's interesting. And I think it can, it can make things move forward. Uh, it can help uh, discuss with the developer community and just not the operators on one side and the developers on the other side. So yes, I think there's a lot of positive things that can come out of this, this meetup if we can follow up. Uh, because it's not about today that we have to can make everything go much better in OpenStack. So I guess it's just a, a starting point, but done together, so it's a pretty positive thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank you for joining us today. I was wondering, could you please share your experience with the Ops in Europe? Well, I think it's a very important meeting for uh, two, re two main reasons. One is the EU. Uh, it's a European-based uh, uh, meeting, so uh, Europe has been uh, Europe has been uh, doing some giant steps forward. Uh, we, as Enter, as our company, and the Cloud Team Alliance has been awarded for a EU uh, tender. Very important because the EU, the EU institutions will be using OpenStack for public cloud services. And the other uh, very important reason is because it's very focused on operators. Operators are that group of OpenStack users that cope every day with uh, real-life problems and with, with customers. So they are the uh, connecting point between the, the, the work of developers and uh, the needs of the users. That's why it's so important for us to be here today. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Please share your experience about the European yeah. operators in this cycle. Yes. The mid-cycle has been great. There have been a lot of really good conversations, both in session and out of session. The venue has been fantastic. We've been able to have both um, just one-on-one -on -one get-togethers as well as larger groups, both in and out of session as well. So what were some of the key takeaways from the sessions here? How people are operating seems to be um, very different from what we were used to in the U.S. The regulations seem to call for um, different different policies, different procedures, uh, kind of somewhat of a different game plan. And it seems as more companies that it's attending are closer to Trump, which is which is interesting. It's not always the experience that we've had. Thank you so much. Thank you.